Since television is everywhere today, it's hard to remember a time before there was television. Hi, I'm Bruce Schweigler, and 45 years ago, television seemed like magic. Indeed, in that post-World War II era, science was more like science fiction. There was nothing in the sky but the planets and space was somewhere nobody had boldly gone before. We were on the verge of a great technological revolution. Only nobody knew just how great it was going to be. 1957, WBZ-TV was approaching its 10th birthday. It seemed the right time to leave something to posterity. A time capsule with all kinds of things inside. Uh, there are safety pins in there and some aspirin tablets a man's nylon stocking, potato peeler, plastic measuring cup, can opener and a mouse trap, and the Holy Bible, and a whole bunch of letters from people like the president of General Motors and auspicious politicians, etc. So we loaded up the capsule in the studio, went outside to the front, and uh, the reason for the ropes that you see is because there's a radioactive marker in it, because if in the intervening years, the parking lot gets dug up or WBZ disappears in some kind of holocaust or something, you could, by means of some kind of a nuclear detector, find this capsule. And there's a radioactive marker there, which is why it's labeled. And it's in this little cement vault with a little glass over it. And if you go to BZ right now and you look out front, there's a marker and it says to be opened in the year 2000. So it's still there. At the time, a science show called 2000 AD was making television history. In the beginning, the idea of 2000 AD was to try and do some things that were unusual. There's a lot of talent around Boston, a lot of scientific capability. Started to do some fairly grandiose, one-of-a-kind things. Uh, walked through fire. We uh, had special suits and took a big porterhouse steak and cooked it live on fire with us in the suits. We should have gotten a minute steak. What? We should have had a minute steak. Oh. We went up the Suffolk Downs and did a program on auto wheel safety. Bought a brand new Chevrolet with 60 I hope miles on it. People know what they're doing there. He's doing a lot more than 38 here now. Oh, yeah, he certainly is. Rolled it live twice, wheel to wheel. Tremendous! My goodness, he's fire. He's very. The fire engine is there now. The guy gets out at the end. And now when I'm reviewing, I'm wondering what would have happened if that fellow had not gotten out at the end. Then the Russians rocked the scientific world by launching the first man-made satellite into orbit. Got a telephone call from someone in the lab who said, how would you like to get a picture of Sputnik in orbit? I said, ha, that's a very funny joke, and how's everything? No, he said, no, seriously. And he said, well, down in Baltimore in a Knoll barn, we have a special camera which is used to track sodium vapor in the upper atmosphere. So every morning for three or four mornings, this camera went out. There's a video output on this camera. And about the third or fourth day, they get this little dot of light going across. A motion picture of Sputnik 1 in orbit before anyone in the world had a still picture. So we get on the NBC News, we had this footage on NBC, and everyone got mad because I guess BZ wouldn't let them have the film. We had it sort of first. The Russians weren't the only ones to make great scientific achievements in 1957. That was the year that WBZ-TV ushered in a new era in television reception. This masterpiece of modern engineering out in Nita was the tallest structure in New England. Technology and television moved into the modern era. By the late 1960s, we were watching science fiction come true before our very eyes. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. 